So as one does while they're fasting, you know, they get a lot of cravings, right? Because it's like, think about it. You're not eating for the entirety of the day, basically. And so when you do have the inkling to eat, you want to eat everything, right? Yeah. So like the past few weeks of us fasting, I've been wanting to eat everything, right? Like one second, I'll have a craving for fried chicken, mashed potatoes, fries. Another second, I'll have a craving for just clams and like, like, you know, scal- scallops and like I have a question. chowder. I, I have a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you, you see how like you're telling me about like all these things that you're craving? Right. Why is it when I ask you <laughs> what you want to eat? That's not true. You don't say anything. That's not true. I tell you what I want to eat, but then you're like... There's, you can't do this to me right now. When you when he asks me what I want to eat, maybe at that second, I don't have a craving. So the other day, oh, he asked okay. me what I wanted to eat, so I literally <laughs> went on Google and I searched food. And then, <laughs> and then I was just on Google Images like, looking through different types of food. At that point, are you even human, bro? Like, everybody <laughs> knows food. Like, okay, oh, anyway. Food. No, I just needed some inspo. Anyway, the girls who get it, get it. So... I had a craving the other day, right? Well, actually, I have this craving for life. Like, this is just, it never goes away. So I had a craving for pancakes, but not just pancakes from anywhere. IHOP pancakes, right? Right, International House pancakes. Oh, is that what it stands for? <laughs> you just turn, <laughs> You're such a big fan you turn of IHOP. Why are you like crying? <laughs> You're such a big fan of IHOP. You don't know what it stands for. Why did you turn like, your head like that? Like, why, why do you think they named it IHOP? <laughs> like, for fun? IHOP. Remember when it was supposed to be IHOP? Anyway, so I really wanted IHOP, and I knew that my friend and I we were going out to get food. You were joining us as well. I guess it's your friend, technically. <laughs> like, but anyway, um, so I was like, okay, can we please go to IHOP, right? It was perfect because we were already going out. We found a place right by our house. It was amazing. You know, I already won ham. But then he told me that there's this, like, not a scandal, but there's a situation going on with IHOP, and it really brought me to tears all right so i did some research and i found out that you know i was i looked up ihop on instagram you did this I like did you this. did it voluntarily yeah yeah, yeah. oh i thought so it I showed up, up for you i looked up ihop on Insta- how's it just gonna show up you're on like, twitter all the time <laughs> okay i looked up ihop on instagram and i saw the ihop queens page and the ihop bronx page mm. so there's ihop uh, queens and there's bronx. two there's a differentiation yeah i think ihop queens has like 300 followers or something ihop bronx is like 190 or something they they need they Who's need to catch up. Social media. Yeah, I need to hit them up, but <laughs> probably not anymore because IHOP has, as you saw, they have a Ramadan menu, and it's very funny. I don't think people knew that. And it's very funny because you know you hear IHOP Ramadan menu, and obviously all the Muslims in Queens and Bronx are, are gonna it. get super excited until they realize that it's not halal. <laughs> <laughs> none of the meat is halal like they say on the ramadan menu is like these items are excluding pork great <laughs> but step done. but they still have turkey sausage and pancakes and eggs and the turkey sausage is not um halal so there was a big scandal um that i saw online that um you know they were trying to cancel ihop queens and ihop bronx wait um, is, are just these two locations the ones that have these menus like none other IHOPs? i think so I might be wrong. I don't know. But they were trying to cancel those IHOPs. I'm not with that. Like, I I understand, like, Muslims got... tried. Like, I understand, like, it's Ramadan. Like, Muslims got to eat halal and stuff. Right. But it's, like, it's IHOP at the end. (laughs) 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 At the end of the day, like, you know, like, choose a side. But it's so crazy because he was telling me that. And we're, like, dang. Like, they really took down the whole menu. (laughs) And then we saw it. (laughs) We saw it literally on the wall next to us on the table. Yeah. So but more of the story. Go to IHOP. Um, why does there have to be a moral? You know, if you're Muslim, you can order off the Ramadan menu, but right. <laughs> don't get the turkey sauce. Right. If you, if you don't want to. Yeah. Right. You can always get the pancakes. The short stack never okay. hurt no one. Uh, <laughs> 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 it hurt you, bro. You <laughs> slept for 24 hours. After yeah, after that. I had the meal at IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did I do that? <laughs> she got pan- <laughs> Yo, tell them what you got. Nah, we don't got into it. Um, all right, <laughs> welcome back to our podcast. Our podcast oh, called God. Difficult Dish. Guys, wait before we continue. When what? I had no, because I'm crying now because the people that are just listening, they're not gonna understand what we're saying. You're holding your stomach. <laughs> 
So I ordered a very big meal for There's no way I just I started the intro okay. of the podcast. <laughs> okay, basically I ordered too much. I got too much more than I could handle. And yeah, then tell after that, order. Go ahead, go and ahead. then after that, We're already here. I couldn't handle it. She got a jumbo omelet. <laughs> she got three short stack pancakes, and she got two buttermilk biscuits. And then I have some of his food. Too. And some of my food. Insanity. All right. Welcome back to our podcast, <laughs> um, Difficult Dish, a podcast about South Asian narratives, hosted by myself, Mosh, and Mosh, and hosted by me, Mahua Khan. And um, before we get any further, like the video. Yeah. If you're watching, subscribe, subscribe to, the, to the channel. If you're watching the video, rate and review the podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Oh, wow. And <laughs> spit it up. Spit it up. And, um, and yeah, uh, we love you. <laughs> we love you. If you guys, <laughs> didn't, the end of the if you guys no. didn't watch the last episode or listen to the last episode, you would know that. We're um, fasting. We're fasting. You wouldn't know. Sorry that we were fasting. And yeah. also, I mean, now you know from the beginning of the episode, but also. Mashoon was uh, not burping. He was hiccuping <laughs> for 30 minutes straight in the last episode. So hopefully today we have no mishaps. Maybe. You were like throwing up, like not throwing up. You were like <laughs> doing some sneezing. You had to leave the room to go sneeze. Listen, it's human. It happens. But anyway, yeah. But yeah, we, we're tired. Um, You know, last episode we had no energy. This episode we, no we drinks, have. Obviously. This episode we have no energy, but we're hiding the fact that we have no energy. We're doing and, pretty good. And trying to, you know, put on a, uh, a facade. A face. A what? A brave face. Okay. Facade is a better we're one. We're doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah, last episode was very low energy, but today we're yeah, going to bring it up a little bit. You know? But now, we're a little bit less low energy. Anyways, um, what are we talking about today? So, Mishun had this great idea <laughs> to do a little story time on some of our travel experience, right? Like, Mishun and I have traveled quite a bit, right? We've had some good experiences, as one would hope to have during travel, but we've also had some very bad experiences right things that maybe we've never mentioned on the pod before or mentioned or even uttered a single word out in public before right because they might have been so bad yes are you gonna share that one story no i'm not okay <laughs> i'm not <laughs> listen i'm gonna share some stuff um just know there's stuff that i'm not sharing there's <laughs> stuff that is very traumatic just, for him even bad. now yeah. he has to work through anyways what are you saying no i was just saying that we're just sharing okay. our good and bad okay you want to go first? Um, tell me, do, just <laughs> before that, tell me your favorite like childhood travel story. Childhood travel, like, like you know, you you know, you think about like places you traveled to, whether it was like Florida when you were like six or like yeah, you know, just the city, whatever. Like, it was probably tell me, that. Like, tell me like a good story from when you were like four, like real quick. Well, it wasn't when I was four. It was probably when I was like seven. Okay, same thing. I remember, <laughs> not the same thing. All right. I remember when um, my uncle used to live in Florida, you know, good old Kissimmee. Yeah, shout out How Kissimmee. How do you pronounce it in, like, the real English terms? Uh, Kissimmee? Kissimmee. Yeah, brown people say Kissimmee. Kissimmee! Yeah, yeah so I used to go to Kissimmee all the time, yeah, right? Yeah, shout out Kissimmee. We probably went about, like, two or three times. Not all the time. We probably went about two or three times in our life, right? So there was this one trip when we went there. Obviously, we would do the good old Disney or the Universal, things like that. And I really liked my uncle's house because he had a little, like, lake slash yeah, like, yeah, pond yeah. in the backyard. Yeah, you know how it is. He had a little golf course in the it's front like yard. It's Good like old that. suburbia. It was so nice, right? And I remember specifically we went for the 4th of July once. And I just remember, like, feeling so, like, comfortable with my family at home. And, like, you know, as a little kid, That's you're just excited to see the fireworks. Too. That's what it is. And I remember too. seeing a little baby frog on the floor outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was just a, such a nice, like, f like, family nostalgic feeling. You yeah. Know? It was a good time. You know, like when we first met, I was so surprised at how much you loved Florida. Yeah, I love because Florida. Because I was in um, still the mindset of not liking Florida. Yeah. But now that I'm here, I'm like, man, I miss the, the You frogs. love Florida. And I, I, I miss the I don't want to spoil anything, and, but I did read a little the, manuscript of po uh, book number two from Mashu Munir, and he has a lot of reminiscences of, of Florida. We don't have to get into that. It's like, I, I just got into it for a second. Oh, spoiler alert. We don't got to get into that. No spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest spoiler alert. <laughs> Um, what's your favorite childhood travel story uh this one time this is the first thing that i thought of i okay. this is not the best it's just the first i have to yeah, be honest yeah yeah you're fine you're good um when i was like six i went to toronto it's like yesterday <laughs> and we were staying at one my uh somebody i don't know whose house somebody yeah and i didn't like, know you went that young yeah and every day um 
they had a park that was like a 10 minute walk from the house mm-hmm. like a pl- not a park like a playground right like a playground right you know, where they have like the no i know what a playground is right thanks and it's just it's one street right like just one street walk down like it, and it's a it's in a neighborhood so walk down the street for 10 minutes you're at the playground um and i saw the playground the first day and i made them take me for like three days straight to the playground and then the last day nobody was available to take me so i snuck out and I went to the You're six. I w- I'm six, and I went to the playground. You're six in a I w- foreign country. I went to the playground myself, and I felt, I felt, you know, like a free bird. So did they I have like an Amber Alert out for you? And I mean, I how'd they find am- you? No, nah, um, I think they just knew I was there. <laughs> 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 or I think like so I listen. I was six. I so don't nothing has changed. You do the same thing now. I don't remember the story very clearly. One day you'll just see. You'll just like. But you know, I've always been gone. a wild. I've always been a wild child. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Like, that's know. what I'm trying to get into. Right. You know, so that's why like I want to talk about you know this type of stuff for this episode because like yeah. right now like I'm not in my travel travel era. Yeah. Um. That's like okay. I'm I'm not thinking about traveling right now. Uh. Just because I just don't feel like it. I want to go a little bit later in the year. But you know, I just want to like reminisce on like some like good times, bad times uh sad times funny times whatever comes to mind yeah um feel me so like you want to get started okay um i know you got some good travel stories it's one time like two years ago i flew up to new york to hang out with her oh i didn't know that was the first story (laughs) and um it's not it's not about you okay um but i was running late for my flight and we were i was in tsa you know general line and you know everybody was in a rush because i think everybody was trying to make this flight you're coming from florida right I come from florida okay. to new york the tsa like line 6 a.m right oh yeah yeah i'm in tsa line the gate closes at like 5 45 it's like 5 40 right now and whatever i put my luggage through the machine i go on the other side my my luggage is gone what happened? Can you imagine in that like what 10 happened? seconds? Think about it. Think about it. You you put your luggage on the machine that, you know, they push it in. They make And they make you like stand there until like it's like. Yeah. Excuse me, so then they push it in and then you go to the other side and then your luggage is gone. So now I'm just like and I'm like standing there for like a minute. I'm like, hello. Like what's going like where is hello? I'm waiting for it to come out. It's not coming out. Right. Um, I found out that uh somebody else took it. And. When Wait, I was, in, in that moment, did you think someone stole it purposely or that someone just by mistake? I knew someone it? didn't steal it. Okay. I knew that someone took it by mistake. Okay. Because there's there, like nobody steals luggage at that point. Yeah. Maybe they do. If this, if you got luggage stolen there, whatever. Yeah. That's um, too, yeah. But I was like, there's someone it's had to take Because I had a very general black carry on, very regular, nothing fancy about it. And when I was waiting on the TSA line, I heard this couple in front of me talking about new york Mm -hmm. so i hypothesized put two and two together that they were on my flight right i knew that they also had a black bag and they took my bag by accident right right? so when it happens i go to like the police officer and i'm like yo my thing got stolen blah blah blah. and i should have i should have said that i think i know what i think i know what happened but I didn't. I just like didn't want to be. But you also be, can't confirm at like, that moment. I didn't want to be like that. Oh, like they took it. They took it. Bob. Like I. I didn't want to be that because I wasn't a hundred percent sure. But I just like had a feeling, right? So whatever. Like we like waste a bunch of time like trying to find it. Whatever. Did they have to look at cameras or anything? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then, um, on and then like after like whatever we can't find it at this point it's like six fifteen. My flight's gone. I know I'm gonna have to rebook it. I tell the police officer at this point, I'm like, yo, I think I know what happened. Um, I've been thinking about it more. And so I tell him, I'm like, yo, I think they took it. And I think they're on the same flight as me. This is the gate. The flight's probably gone. But like, let can we go there? And I'm surprised he said yes, because it was just like a like out the whim, like no backbone to it. And yeah. he just like we went. And then right. Right. Like. Yo, the, uh, the craziest thing. So uh, this, I finally get to the gate, and it's like 15 minutes after when the, the flight, closes. the f- after the gate closer and whatever, and like the f- flight supposedly left. But I see the gate is still open. Hmm. The gate is still open. There's like the last like four people entering. So I'm like, okay, they like they were probably notified that a bunch of people from TSA are on this flight. They probably held it open a, lo- a little bit more. 
And then I don't even think I told you like the full extent of this. And so there's like four people left in line. And then the two people left like in behind, they're the two people, the, the couple that I saw from the TSA line and I see them and I go up to them and I'm like, yo, like, is there any chance? And I don't see my bag with them, but still I went up to ask them. I was like, yo, is there any chance you took my bag? And they were like, yeah, we took it uh, by accident. And I'm like, where's my bag? <laughs> and they're like, we gave it back. <laughs> and I'm like, what does that mean? And they're like, yeah, we don't know. We just kind of gave it to somebody. So wait, did they take their own bag and your bag? Yes. How? Because <laughs> I think, so they had two carry-ons and then they had like a small thing like on top of the i don't remember clearly but i know that they had like three bags but how silly do you have to be to take that's what i'm saying so at this moment the gate is about to close right and they sent my bag back all the way back and i'm looking at them and like at that moment i could have either like went belligerent on them and been like why are you stupid like it's that dumb right but they just like turn around and then they like enter the plane and then the gate closes and I'm like, <laughs> in like all slow motion. And, I'm like, and so, yeah. And then I have to like go find my bag and book another flight. And it was like, no, oh, basically, okay. I remember when he told me this. This was two years ago. I remember because we talked about it for an extensive period of time. I was so pissed Crazy. off for him. I remember they tried booking you another flight, but you were on standby. Oh, yeah. yeah and then yeah, the, yeah. there was like nine people on standby, and you happened to be number nine. Yeah. And they called, <laughs> they called Damn, I forgot eight that. people. Yeah. And you were the last person to not get on the next flight. Yeah. So then they had to what, book you another flight? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was at the airport for like six, seven hours. So yeah, yeah. And this was all before like 7 a.m. Yeah. Catch flight and I feel Everyone like was waking up so comfortably. Ah, yeah, this uh, could be I such a good day. You're having the worst <laughs> day of your life. Yeah, and th- th- that couple was all the way back in New York already. Like, they were yeah. done. <laughs> uh, uh, what yeah. a good day. Um, yeah, you know, so, like, moral of the story, um, put a ribbon around your bags. Yeah, our immigrant parents had something they were like that. Something. They were, they were, they knew from back then. You know, uh, there's, there's a lot of skimpy people out here. You yeah, know, there's a lot of people out here with bad intentions. Yeah, um, or are just dumb and just take the wrong bag. Yeah. Whatever it is. Um, so shout out to them. You know how coquette is like a big aesthetic right now, like coquette. I've never heard that word. Coquette, like ballet. I aesthetic. thought you meant like croquette, <laughs> like the sport. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Coquette is like a ribbon, like ballet oh i know aesthetic. what you're talking about i know what you're talking about our immigrant parents really invented that with luggages because yeah. they put a ribbon on everything yeah right? yeah yeah and i actually when i went to the airport the other day after bangladesh i saw this luggage that was coming you know in the turnstile and it was like a a black family like an immigrant family and it was fully saran wrapped yeah yeah and i was like wow that is so smart you didn't see that you didn't see that in bangladesh not as much. Bro, in, in the Bangladesh airport, they have the guy at the kiosk who, like, sells that service. Who, I like, didn't know that was a he'll thing. He'll wrap your bags. Yeah. Wow. He has a little machine. It goes in, like, a circle. Wow. And it's cheap. It's, like, 50 dollars I was going to do it. I don't know why. That's actually smart. Like, yeah. Because it's, like, then you know that then no one's going to Then there's no possibility. It. Yeah, it's You know, smart. you are safe. It's smart. But Absolutely. then you can't. You also can't open it up yourself no, if you need something. No, not at all. But why would you need to? Because it's, like, it's um, like pillows on the there. plane. It's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you don't have access to it. All right. So, okay, yeah, you got some. Since we were talking about stories of going, like, the plane story going to another place, I also have a journey story. Okay, yeah, hit me. So, as you guys know, I solo traveled to Paris, right? I went to Paris for three weeks. Oui, oui. That was my first ever solo international trip ever, and for such a long period of time. I was going there, and I was very nervous, right? And when you... And I was nervous, but I was also very excited because that was the first time that I was, like, pushing myself out of my comfort zone that hard. It was a little graduation gift to myself. I was excited, but also very scared. And when you are, like, nervous and scared, you kind of put yourself in, like, a negative... Yeah, yeah. You know, mindset. Yeah, I've been there. Where it seems like everything is going wrong because yeah. you're already in, like, a negative Fast. outlook, you know? But if you have, like, the lucky girl syndrome, which is, like... Oh. Oh my god i'm the luckiest girl alive i'm thinking abundantly yeah, like everything yeah everything good is gonna happen to me then you will focus on the good more right mm. but since on the trip there i was already in like a bad type of mindset even mm. though i was excited bad things were happening to me right wow so i had this trip to paris from new york it was at like 10 p.m whatever 
I was on the plane. I, my my feet were already very stinky because I was wearing Doc Martens. It was a Hunting. long flight. Yeah. And I was carrying a carry-on for this long flight and a duffel bag, right? This duffel bag is my old karate days duffel bag from like what 2007 or something okay. i don't know why i took that but i did and Not that was my done. fault so anyway before i even got out of jfk in new york there was a hole in the duffel bag on the left corner so it because it was so heavy so i was dragging it because it was so heavy but there was also a hole but I, I couldn't do anything about it right so whatever i get on this flight and then this jockey guy comes into the plane sits right next to me right and whatever he didn't talk for a little bit and then he started talking and he wasn't like a bad guy like he was nice i think he was from like not the netherlands but somewhere in europe so he didn't seem like he had like bad intentions honestly it seemed like he just wanted someone to talk to but i was not in the mood to talk you know it's 10 mm. p.m plus mm-hmm. i'm going to paris for the first time like stop talking to me mm. so he's telling me his whole life story and also you know when you're like a girl and sometimes you're uncomfortable well you wouldn't know actually but the listeners that are listening sometimes when you're uncomfortable and you're a female you kind of talk more because you don't know how to like stop the conversation. You know, it's kind of like a fear um, thing that you do to protect yourself. So I was like talking more, contributing to the conversation, Mm. making him feel like I was actually interested when I was not. Whatever. He's telling me that he goes to the gym and he's like going to back to his home country, whatever. And then the flight, he's in the middle seat. I'm in the window seat. And then he goes, Oh, can I like lean my head on your shoulder? And what, I'm what like, does he mean by that? yeah, sure. And he wasn't like fully like that, but he was like more on my side than, you know, because he's like a bigger guy. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Because also, what do, like, I felt uncomfortable. I didn't know how to say no, which okay. is like such a bad thing. But, you know, in that moment, I didn't know what to do. Um. Anyway, whatever, we land and then we get out of the gate in Germany. We had a layover there. And again, I have such heavy stuff with me. Mm. And I, I go upstairs with the guy. He's still with me because we have to go through border control. And then I realized my phone is not in my hand. I was like, where did I leave my phone? This never happens to me. I'm a very prepared and organized person. And then I realized that I left my phone downstairs right outside of the gate. And I'm like, oh, my God, do I either trust this person that I don't know with my bags and run down and get it? Because there was no way I would be able to like carry back everything downstairs. Or do I you know, take everything downstairs and hope that it's there? So I trusted this guy, went back downstairs for my phone. Thankfully, it was there. And then I ran back upstairs and I was Mm. sweating. And he thankfully had my bags. He, like, didn't run away with it, obviously. And then he was like, oh, can I take a picture with you? And I'm like, okay, sure. In my head, it felt like this was the first time ever he saw a brown person, right? (laughs) Because I'm like, I'm not a zoo animal. Like, the way, you know? I don't know if it was like, oh, like, I had such a nice time with you. Let me take a picture for a memory. Okay. Or whatever. And then I take a picture. It looks so freaking ugly in it. And then he asked for my Instagram. I gave it to him and then I removed him and unfollowed him later on, whatever. And then thankfully at that time we separated because he was able to go through the European border control. I had to go through American. And then I'm in Germany. You know the story. I'm in Germany and I'm going through border control. They're so mean to me. I mean, they're mean to everyone basically, but more to me because I'm a female solo traveler. Mm. And then I go through TSA again and they randomly security check me. Okay. Because they pull out my straightener and it like beeped or my curler or something. Yeah, had to be done. And then they take off my shoes and everything to try to find like the metal thing that went off or whatever. And I'm like, okay, stinky shoes. You deserve that, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so they pull out my, my curler thinking, I don't know what they thought it was. And then I'm like, put it back in because now you look stupid. Yeah. Please. Also, my security alarm on my keys went off because I was kicking the duffel bag. The keys yeah, were in my duffel bag. So whatever, all these things were happening. My flight to Paris was in like two seconds, right? Mm-hmm. They, they wouldn't close my luggage for me. And like, think about it. I'm fitting, because uh, after that, I went to London, right, for a week. So I was out of yeah. the country for a month. Think about it. I had a month's worth of stuff in my carry-on. and My carry-on from 2004, probably. Right. And my karate duffel bag. So I'm like sitting on top of my luggage, trying to close it, trying to run to my flight. The gates are closed, honey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Bye. There's no point. Like, Done. I'm dragging this duffel bag. I get on the little conveyor belt that makes it go quicker. <laughs> Did it really make me go any quicker? <laughs> I run there. The flights are all closed. Yeah. It's, it seems deserted. It seems like no one was even there. And I'm like, hello, I'm here. Mm. And they're like, bye. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> go yeah. Go book another yeah, flight. So then I had to go back to the line with my freaking bags and book this. another flight. And then we get to Paris finally 
whole other stuff happened but basically i couldn't get into my airbnb for like 40 minutes at this point i haven't slept in like 24 hours right i was so upset and then i finally got into my airbnb after so long and then i slept until the next day yeah yeah wow. that's that was my first experience in paris but honestly after that i had to get that out of my system i had a really good good like trip did you yeah more of the story Moral of the story is don't let your journey and, like, the first part of your trip define your whole trip. Like, like think brightly. Think brightly. You brightly? Know? Yeah. Abundantly. Think abundantly. There you go. Yeah. That's an amazing story. Because I could have let that just ruin my whole trip. Facts. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This whole that, journey was so bad. I know gonna this whole trip's going to be bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. That's a great story. It was a good. It was a I good can't day. top that. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. I got, I got um two stories. I got one about New York and one about one about my first solo trip to New York and one about my first solo trip to Colombia. Which one do you want to hear? Colombia, since we just heard about New York. You know both. Okay. So, as you guys know, um, I'm from Orlando, Florida. And my part of Orlando, I had a large Latin community. Yeah. A lot of Latin people. Yeah. So I grew up with a lot of Latin people. That's true. And I grew up loving Latin culture and South American culture. I grew up with a lot of Puerto Ricans, a lot of Dominicans, a lot of Colombians. Mm -hmm. And with that, I always wanted to go to South American countries. Yeah. Because I always heard them talking about, you know, their motherlands and how much they love it. And so I went to San I went to uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico for my first solo trip when I was eighteen. And my second solo trip to a Latin American country, I went to Colombia. Uh, it was in the last semester of, or second to last semester of uh, my time at UCF, and it was like a random weekend. It was like a three day weekend, and uh, I went for like four days or something. It was super spontaneous. The ticket was super cheap, which is why I went. Um, a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all talk down on Spirit, but Spirit is the only airlines that has direct flights from oh, really? Orlando to Medellin, Colombia. Oh, interesting. Only airline, so. I'm a spirit spokesperson. You're the only one that talks out of spirit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I go um, really spontaneous. I don't look up anything. I don't practice any Spanish. I don't know anything. The only thing that I look up. Which I wouldn't recommend, by the please way. Please don't. <laughs> for the love of God, don't do that. It worked out for me, but it shouldn't have. The only thing that I looked up, and I looked it up when right before I got on the plane. <laughs> it's like, that's how you yeah, know me so and bad. you are different because you're so spontaneous and unprepared whereas i have everything figured out yeah no nothing okay um the only thing that i planned that i booked was my um airport transfer like from the airport to hope. my airbnb i would because i don't uh, and i also looked up if uber works there uber works there yeah the only thing that I, the only thing that i booked was um a car that gets me to my airbnb right mm. so i know nothing so boom i land i get to my airbnb it's like 5 p.m um on a thursday night and i check in and it's a beautiful airbnb good god i think yeah. about the airbnb all the time and now i'm just like okay <laughs> now what? <laughs> like, what do i do and it starts like raining outside and the sun is like starting to come down and i'm like damn like do i and i'm tired you know i don't know what to do i don't know spanish <laughs> i don't even know if uber works like i haven't tried to do it yet and i'm like wow do i stay in tonight or do i go out mm. you know do i do i live that wild life and mm -hmm. you know like go out and oh, like just like story, see what right? happens this is a good story yeah yeah this is a good story. i remember yeah, yeah. it's a good story um and i go out. what what did you think i was saying no 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 i was just clarifying oh yeah yeah good yeah. story sorry to burst you guys bubble <laughs> um and so i start looking up things to do and i see that there's this event called a language exchange that's going on um it's an event at, hosted at a rooftop at a hostel where travelers meet and they exchange their languages so like people that are speaking english we can talk to somebody speaking that lo that knows uh norwegian or mm. i don't know if that's a language is norwegian i don't know <laughs> um and you can you know teach each other your guys language and i was like wow i got two languages that i could teach somebody i could teach english or whatever wow and i see that the place is like 15 minutes nearby and i looked on their facebook and they had you know pictures where like the turnout's like cool like, it's like 30 people it's like it's a it's little cute. vibe yeah right? calm and i'm like you know what i'm outside tonight right yellow i'm going outside we'll see what happens if i go and there's nobody there at least i tried right yeah 
So I find out how to use Uber. I take a Uber. I go to this place. It's in like not the middle of nowhere, but there's like nothing really nearby. It's called Uber there too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, you know how it's Uber. other apps. Yeah. Exist. They got Rappi. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm but saying. But yeah, that's, that's Uber Eats, right? That's Uber Eats. Yeah, Rappi. Rappi. I can't uh, roll my arms. Okay. Um, Rappi. And it's like it's like this like this like building, like he just drops me off there, and I'm like asking people around, sus, like, right? do they know? It's it looks pretty sus, and I'm like asking people around, like, where is it? Blah blah. blah. And I'm just like asking for the hostel, and like nobody just knows. So oh, then like, it's like it's at a hostel, and I wander into like, but it's not like a nice hostel. It's like, it's like a like more, a local like a like a a budget hostel, like yeah. you know, like those types of hostels. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, I eventually find it, and I, like, walk up the stairs, and I ask, like, oh, is this the place? And he's like, yeah. And then he's like, oh, like, you have just, it's, like, on the roof. And, like, the stairways to the roof were, like, crazy. It was, like, the most, uh, like, inadequate, like, abnormal staircase I've ever seen. Like, you have mm-hmm. to take. Anyways, I end up to the roof, and it starts at 730, and I get there at 730, and I'm, like, the first person there. <laughs> and I'm, like. You should okay. talking to yourself. <laughs> at that point, I was, like, ready to go. I was, like, I'm wasting my time here. So I'm waiting. Uh, I'm like, so I tell myself like, okay, let me just wait like five minutes, see what happens. So I wait like a couple minutes, and like the fourth guy that comes in is is like this nerdy Indian guy, like big glasses, like comb over haircut. He comes in and he like sits down next to me and he like starts talking to me, and I start talking to him because I'm like, okay, it's the first person to start talking to me, and he's like so annoying. He's like <laughs> so so annoying. Like he's from London. He has like a really thick English accent, and like we talked for an hour just about like 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 life in london and like we started talking about like violence in london and he just kept and i was like i was like oh like is it is it like is it like scary out there like i hear i listen to a lot of uk drill music (laughs) and and i hear from these musicians that you know it's tough out there and he's like nah all that's fake none that so whatever i wasn't having a good time with him but he kept me there for like an hour Mm. i'll speed up the story from now on um so then more people are coming this group of like four guys comes in and they sit down with us. We all start talking. And one of the guys in that group, his name is Victor, who soon becomes one of my best, like my best friend from Colombia, and one of like my favorite people in the whole world today. I started talking to him, and like you know those people in life that you just like kick it off with. Yeah. It doesn't happen often, but like you like you know like when it happens. Like have you had have you had this happen like recently, where you just like meet someone you just like kind of kick it off. It's okay. If not, not recently. No. But I've had it. Whenever it happens, man, like my heart just like. You know, it's like, like feel like finding your soul friend. friend yeah, you know, because you know, like the it's it's nice to you know have a friendship that you grow over time yeah. and like stuff where like you don't start off the closest. Like that's lovely too, but like it's like it's really cool it's like, when like you like kick being it off with someone understood right away, like yeah. connected right away. Yeah, and um, I just kick it off with this guy. This is probably like one of like five people I've ever kicked it off with, and um, and he introduced me to all of his friends um and then after that we go out and he takes me to like a bunch of different places and we were out to like 5 a.m the first night and then the second day he took me out to Comuna Trece, which is like one of like the more to- like touristy neighborhoods and like shows me all around and he takes me to his aunt's house and like we make like empanadas in like her back porch and like the next day he takes me all and it- he just like kept me company like the whole trip and like we were talking like the end of the first night and i was just like so thankful for him i was like yo like why are you doing this like and it wasn't like he wasn't paying for me or anything like i didn't i i wouldn't ask for any of that but he was just like he was going out of his way to just like show me medicine and Mm -hmm. like to show me a good time it's nice to have a local's perspective too. yeah and and he was like he was like i was like yo why are you doing this and he was like yo like this is this is how we um he said something he said a lot more nice than how i'm gonna say it. but he was just like this is how we like regrow the name of columbia it's like when people come it's it's my job to show you a good time here mm-hmm. so then you go back home and you and tell, people yeah, tell people about how good of a time you had and then you get on your podcast and you say how good of a time you had and then those people will come and yeah. then it goes on and on and he said it much nicer but that just always like stuck how did with you me. know to trust him was it just like a gut feeling you know like i i'm naturally a very like you know this i'm a very um yes i'm very spontaneous and i love to do whatever things but i have like really really big like trust issues yeah and i'm a i'm 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 a quite a paranoid person yeah like i don't trust people that easily 
but something about him man like i can't describe it yeah. it's like you know you just meet those people that are just like either like you're playing like the the world's most devious game like being like this with me or you're just like a good soul mm-hmm. and like i think 99.99% of the time you you can when like that person approaches you like you can tell that it's like a genuine person you know and i i like don't blame anybody for like being like if i was more cautious in that like thank god i wasn't but like if i was more cautious in that situation like i don't think he would have gotten upset like he would understood because like especially like in colombia and like a lot of like south american countries or like south asian like wherever like everywhere in the world um there's gonna be people that are gonna try to take advantage of you yeah um but you know, like when, when, like sometimes, like you could just like feel like that energy of like somebody that's just like, and it, I think, I think it just comes like to like the smile, like somebody like this, mm-hmm. like I, I met this Indian guy in Orlando at like this lounge with my friend Soham a couple months ago, and he was playing pool. We started playing pool with him. We started talking to him. I think I told you about him, and I, I, I was getting a really good vibe with vibe from him, but my friend Soham wasn't. And my friend, like, I kept looking at him, and someone's usually, like, really talkative. But in this situation, he, like, he wasn't being that talkative. And I, at one point, I pulled him aside. I was like, yo, like, do you not like him? Like, I, I feel like he's great. Like, I feel like this guy's really cool. And so I was like, nah, man, like, something's off. And then, like, ends out, like, turns out my friend was very, very right. And this guy was, had, like, a very bad background. And I didn't catch it, and Soham did. And I think ever since that, I I got, like, reminded of, like, you know like what are like red flags to look like look out for but i think a lot of time it just comes down to like the smile the person has you know like some, you can mm. tell it like, when like a smile is like a, well some people can person. disguise their smile really yeah well. but i know okay but, <laughs> <He does. laughs> but, but you know that man, experience that you had yeah. like that impromptu spontaneous feeling of making friends out of nowhere is what inspired me to like stay at a hostel when mm-hmm. i solo traveled in amsterdam and try to fake make those friends because usually when i solo travel my intention is not to make friends or connections it's just to like experience the the place and culture yeah. alone but the am like that really inspired me do you remember when you were in colombia and you had to take a really big pill like a big red pill <laughs> yo Can i you got like brush over that story real quick damn i forgot about i should have told the it's fine just the just, hiking story just brush over it really quick so my second time to Columbia after I graduated, I went for like six weeks just because I wanted to catch a vibe over six there. Six weeks is great too. And I went, and then like my first weekend there, um, me, Victor, and three other people went on a hike, and I didn't realize that this hike was a, uh, it was a hike, <laughs> and it was a very dangerous hike. I did not, I didn't, uh, I had to leave. To realize like what I just did. If I was there, I would have pulled him by the ear. I was, God, um, and the whole time we were getting rained on too. So like imagine trenched. a imagine a crazy trenched, ass trenched. hike, steep, steep, whatever hike got rained on the whole time. I was sick. I was the most sick that I've ever been, like for the next like four days. And I told my friend Natalia, and she's like, she's like, all right, I'm a, I'm gonna send you some. <laughs> and she sent me this box. Imagine, like, a box, like, the size of, like, my phone. And, like, this box only had one pill. <laughs> <laughs> like, this pill, it was, like... How big was the pill? Bro, it was, Explain like, a, it. it was a golf ball, bro. No, I actually. Sw- a, like, imagine an, an ovular golf ball. Actually. I s- wallah, there's I no way you swallowed... Imagine, maybe a little bit smaller than a golf ball in an oval shape. Is it, like, the size of, like, a date? Like, a kidjur? Yeah, that's a good one. Maybe a Why'd bit you bigger. say maybe golf a, ball? Maybe a bit bigger. It's completely a different. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. A little okay. bit bigger than, than a date. She was like, yo, take this. You'll feel great. And I took it and I went to sleep. And literally, yeah, like, I woke up and I was cured. What was in the pill? I don't know. I asked her. She's like, it's just, it's Columbia medicine. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. That's like us taking Arnica when we were, do you never had that? No. Nah. Bangli families. We had this, like, sugary, like, pill. Okay. We just take and that one with pain. It just did the job. I guess, but me and my brother would just have it for fun because it tasted yeah. so good. And you're just forever. We just sneak well. it. <laughs> we just sneak it. Just never in sick my mom's again. jar. I feel you. But anyway. Yeah, that was me with like chips. Like I used to. I used to like. <laughs> you could have kept that one to yourself. <laughs> I would. Right. I would have started. It's still yeah. you. But anyway. Anyways, all right, go. I mean, now that you said the story about 
going to Colombia and me- making a friend, I might as well talk about Amsterdam and staying at the hostel. Yeah, why not? So I went to uh, Amsterdam for five or six days. And the, the last two days of the trip, I stayed at a hostel. The first three days, I stayed at a hotel. So it was a nice, like, you know, half-half. But when I stayed at the hostel, I was really excited because um, it was my first time, like, staying in, like, a more communal place. Even though I had my own private room. I was still able to have like opportunities to make friends because they had like events and things like that to like, you know, promote community and like friendship. Yeah. And in the beginning, I was very scared because I felt like everyone had their own friends already. People were talking already. And, you know, what am I to like intrude? Who are you? Because it's like a very big thing to like get out of your comfort zone, you know? So in the beginning, I kind of just like scoped it out. I felt very like lonely and depressed because like, you know, I felt like goes. everyone else had friends. So I was just eating my burger and fries by myself and like whatever. And then the next day and then also when I went back to my room, it was like 11 p.m. or something. I heard all this like noise and stuff coming from downstairs and I look out the window and there's like a whole like middle terrace section that I didn't even see. Mm. And people were like playing like like Connect Four on this big place. They were playing all these they different stopped. games. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't even know about this. And yeah. they all have friends. But I, I feel like if I'd gone there and, like, made the choice to actually try, I would have just blended in whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I went to sleep after that. And the next day I made this this decision that I would actively try. Okay? That's the thing. You have to be more open-minded. And I'm like, gotcha. I'm going to actually put myself out there today and try to engage in conversation if someone talks to me. Even if they don't talk to me, I'll try, you know? And luckily enough, for an artist like me, they had a paint night. (laughs) Wow, that's all it took. They had a paint night that night. So I knew that I would put myself there, even if it was empty, even if there were people there. And I went there early on, got all my materials sorted from the team. (laughs) And then I started painting. And this girl named Emily sat next to me, right? Emily. And, you know, we were just like painting next to each other. We weren't really talking. There was like a whole bunch of people at the table, whatever. We were just like asking each other for paint, you know, how basic conversations start. Like, mm-hmm. oh, can you pass over that? Pass over the that red paintbrush. Please. Yeah, yeah. I need to make some burgundy. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> um, and then you know, I'm like complimenting Emily's like drawing. Oh my god, like so nice. Yeah. She's complimenting mine. Like, oh my god, you're so an nice. artist. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know, we we're just like talking slowly like that. And then she saw my vlog camera and she was like, hmm, like she a vlogger Blogger. Is she a youtuber Blogger. yes she so is. that's how like like simple conversation started and whatever right and then it turns out that we were talking more and more <laughs> and then out. we started talking after the paint session was over and we just like sat there and then i was like oh i'm going to this place right next to the hostel after it's kind of like kind of like the empire state for their their terms even mm. though it was not that high up at all and it was like a swing that goes over the building right so it's like you're basically swinging over the whole city but it was in like skyscrapers like New York. But it was so scary, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm going there after. Like, if you want to come through, you can. And she was like, oh, cool. Like, I'll come. Yeah. And then we went to that place after. And oh, also before we went there, we met this other girl that seemed pretty cool. She was also like a, a traveler, a solo traveler. So Emily was a solo traveler. She's from London. Another solo traveler came. Her name was Libby. She came from um, Iowa or something, Idaho or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the Moy yeah and then so just the two of us went to that thing after because um libby had something else to do we had so much fun there she wasn't supposed to get a ride because i booked my ticket ahead of time and so there was no tickets for that time Mm. slot for emily but the person just let us both on yes so she had a free like trip from from that so we were both on the swing together and it was just so much fun and then we came back we we met up with libby and then we were just like in that little middle terrace section, all three of us just chatting away, laughing. Yeah. That's and I felt like I actually made like friends on that yeah. trip, you know, like now when I think of Amsterdam, obviously I have my beautiful like solo travel fun moments that I had by myself. But then I also had these fun like people to associate it with. Yeah. You know, more of the story. More of the story is like put yourself out there and yeah. like, yeah, have your alone time and do what you want to do, but also try to like have people that you can associate a good trip with do you have any like 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 real like tangible tips for like you know in that situation like what what you did that like heightened your chances of like making friends friends? yeah maybe like not have my headphones in like during the paint night you know like seem more approachable yeah um maybe try to initiate conversation sometimes whether it doesn't have to be oh hi hello my name is it can just be like something that they're working on and complimenting it or like 
something that you notice that they're doing you know yeah. just so you seem more approachable yeah but yeah just make that effort make more eye contact shout out to hostels i think hostels are great underrated i think uh a tip that i have you know when if you go to if you're traveling you're staying at a hostel or some um if if you're on an event and you want to socialize no alhamdulillah uh, alh- alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah. thank you when you're at an event and you want to socialize you either target the oh, target you, <laughs> you target the person that's alone yeah or even better you target a group of two guy, two people mm-hmm. that like you look at them and you see that they're like they need not like ha- a third. they're not having that much conversation that's always the easiest because if there's two people they always want a third unless like uh, on a date or like whatever <laughs> i don't know what they'd be on <laughs> a date i don't know like a date. but like a major- <laughs> like tell me not like if you and your friend are hanging out and like it's like your friend that you just you've known for whatever and like you just don't care like why would you not want like a third cool person to like yeah. join you know so it's like i started thing thing about like socializing like that and like whenever when i went back to columbia like this past time i would go to like an event on the rooftop and like i would always see like two guys that i could tell just met each other as well yeah and i'll go to them it'd be like really easy and a lot of time like you could just tell them straight up you'd be like yo like I'm here dolo. Can I hang out with y'all? Nine out of ten success rate, huh? I mean, they will never say no. Like, it's literally <laughs> ten out of ten. If they don't feel like it, you will get that feeling throughout the conversation. But, like, yeah. nobody will say no to that. Yeah. You know? And and it's easier than just, like, going up. Because, like, a lot of us feel really awkward, like, coming up. Be like, oh, hi. What's, yeah. what's your name? Like, yeah. starting off like that. So, you just start be like, yo, I'm, I'm here alone. Like, catch a vibe. Yeah. yeah like like put the put that on the table first like oh hey i'm here alone like is it okay if i join you guys yeah and instead of, of like, like of course yeah yeah so um good tip yeah uh once i stayed at a hostel in bogota and you hated it i hated it <laughs> yeah i Why? hated it because i woke up one morning at like how many sep- people were in this hostel it was a four bed so when i came i came out in at night and i saw that two of the beds were taken Right. So I saw that, okay, there's two people here. So then when I woke up at 7.30, I went to, like, the bathroom, and I saw that there was nobody there. And that, like, the three beds were clean. Hmm. So I think, like, everybody checked out, and I was, like, there alone. Mm-hmm. So I go to the bathroom and go back to bed, right? And, I like, like, 10 minutes later, I hear on the door. It's, like, banging on the door. Right. And I'm, like, okay, odd. You're, like, you need a key card to get in. Right bang on the door not saying anything just banging and it stops banging bang right. on the door and then it goes instead of banging like this person grabs the door handle and it starts jingling starts it. shaking the, the yeah. door handle whatever so this whole time i'm thinking i'm like oh it's someone that like just is stupid and doesn't know that this isn't their room right like what like, what are you doing yeah because if this was your room you would if you forgot your key card you would be saying something oh, i forgot my key card or you had your key card whatever right so literally for the next 20 minutes 15 to 20 minutes just non-stop like that was me in paris moving the, moving the door <laughs> trying to get into my Airbnb. Like this. and at this point i call the front desk and i'm like yo there's somebody just like i at this point i'm like are they trying to break in like, this one is trying <laughs> to rob still me. is crazy like now i'm like trying to like put like my pants on and like <laughs> like getting ready for like to fight because like attack. Yo, what's happening bro <laughs> and i called a front desk and they're like oh they'll come check and then like they come check and then it's like just a girl that just forgot her card and i'm like why do you not say anything <laughs> you're just trying to like, get it why are you why are you mo- like wiggling the door handle 20 minutes and like thing that's gonna come yeah, on just go back down and say you forgot anyways other than that you know was hustle, it clean like, hustle yeah it's clean it's a vibe um bogota is a very mean city uh, it's beautiful but everything uh, ev- everybody i talked to was very mean mm. i don't like mean people because i'm a nice person you know Are i'm you? a very like you know like i'm not looking maybe for, they like, saw you try to like attempt spanish and they didn't like it my spanish isn't that bad though mm. you know like but you know you could tell apart from like Hola, local versus like como te llamas? you can tell apart okay, from local me versus gusta empanadas <laughs> 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 you just went up to every single person <laughs> me gusta <laughs> empanadas. empanadas me gusta arepas okay um oh wow i remember this one time i was at a i was at another hostel event in medellin and me and it was me and victor and somebody else we, we just started talking to like random people and like victor started talking to like 
these two brown girls and like this one brown guy and like i joined them and like we're talking and then like i was like oh like i i forgot i was like oh like are you guys south asian they're like they're like nah nah we're we're trini i was like that's south asian and they're like no like nobody's ever said that we're south asian before i'm like yo like trinis are south asian and well there's it's divisive well, I growing up my whole life, I always looked at it as Trini. Yeah, and some people, people consider are South that. Asian. Bro, like some, tr- bro, like Trinis can be more South Asian than Indians, bro, because like Trinis and Guyanese people are like actually cultured, <laughs> and, like yeah. are actually just like invested in like. We we're just talking. I was just talking to him. I was like, yo, you guys. Are, I was like, I was like, yo, you guys are South Asian, bro. Like you guys are like part of like. I'm. I would never say that you guys are not involved with us. Like, yeah, you know, because I, I feel like a, like growing up, that's all like Trini and Guyanese people here is like they're not a part of the community. They're like just in like this like caribbean bubble that's like it's just like them too and mm-hmm. like they're like not involved in like anything yeah. else um so you but, validated their experience yeah i told them i was like yo like you're you're in you're you are us you you are you are you are here beautiful for me yeah Bing. so as you guys know on our instagram if you guys don't follow us now you can if you'd like to we're about to hit 10k amazing um it's Damn at difficult dish so we posted a story as we always do before our new episodes where we post what the episode is going to be about. You guys can put in your input, send in your responses, and we sometimes mention them in our episodes. So this time around, we asked you guys, what are some good or bad travel experiences that you've had? Tell us some stories. So we're going to share a few. All right, when we got, I almost got arrested. Wow. Talking politics in a museum in Beijing, China. So a lot of these countries, like, don't play around when it comes to their you know political. That scares me because it's like, if you get arrested or if you're hospitalized or if you lose your passport in another country, that like freaks me out mm. because it's like you can get stuck there. <sighs> Man, that just reminds me of something that I don't want to talk about. What? No, it's okay. Okay. But that's my biggest fear. Which part? Like All losing three? your phone, your passport, or, like while you're like in Barbados. Just yeah. Trying to catch a vibe. Then yeah. Ooh. But I feel like China is more home. scary. Yeah. <laughs> China is scary. I actually had a friend. Um, from Bangladesh that told me he lost his passport in China and they didn't let him leave for like two weeks or something. Damn. And then the only way he was able to leave was because his father was like a part of the military and like that connections or something. Yeah. It's scary. That's crazy. At the beginning of our Miami trip, my friend's card got quote unquote stolen. In reality, he was broke. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I literally just watched a TikTok of this girl's full-on story time where she went on vacation to like cancun or like mexico or something with her girls and this one girl came broke she came with only 135 dollars for the whole trip and she was just talking about how this girl just refused to pay anyone that's different. and i was like that's wild that's don't go on a trip if you're broke get your money up not your funny up don't be going on no trips don't be <laughs> yeah. don't be lollygagging in ocean drive ah not ocean <laughs> drive <laughs> nah, you need to get those hours in all right so as you guys know we end off our episodes with 10 second advices at least we try to sometimes we go a little bit overboard do you have any 10 second piece of advice my 10 second piece of advice is stand up for yourself even if you feel like it's too much of a hassle and other people will talk shit about you for doing it wow why are you up there you know what they say can you come down back down that's that's pretty good advice yeah i wish some people would follow it that's pretty good that's pretty good (laughs) advice my advice is um you know i know we talked smack about ihop in the beginning but they got this um happy hour weekday happy hour no one talks smack monday through friday three to nine p.m uh yeah three to nine is a big Time. that's a that's a real that's big a chunk. very very happy hour yeah that's a big that's a that's a, <laughs> that's joyful a happy hour. hours that's a joyful hour yeah that's a ecstatic hour <laughs> um yeah ch- check that out that's what did you get really good advice huh what did you i get? got a burger and fries and i got it doesn't end there i also got chicken tenders it doesn't end there i also got um them in in nashville hot sauce it doesn't end there i also had her biscuits um it, it? it doesn't end there i also had some of uh, my god sister's omelet 
contest. And pancakes. And it doesn't end. And pancakes. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for listening to our episode. Thank of you so much. Of our podcast. Please like the video. And have a great rest of Ramadan and a great rest of 2024. 2024. And it's just gonna, it's just a good life out here. You gonna, know, so, okay, up, up, so, up, 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 up. Feel me? So practice gratitude, um, abundance, and you know, uh, is is difficult this sh- for for L. All right, <laughs> we love you guys, and we'll see you next, next week. Time. Okay, bye. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.